So what's next, Amir? Uh, next is going to be um, probably another fight. <laughs> I want to <laughs> fight in states. That's a big. That's a big thing for me. Uh, my dreams being to fight in Vegas uh, under a big venue, you know, a big card. And hopefully that's what I'm going to be aiming for. You know, I'm going to be sat down with my team, so we see if we if we can make the fight there. Have you got any particular um, boxers in mind? There's a few, you know, um, probably Zab Judas and one who we might be looking at. Then you've got Juan Diaz. I'd like to fight someone like Marquez. So we're going to be speaking with the team and hopefully um, we'll, we'll come up with a name soon. Were you surprised at the ease of your victory? Um, yeah, I was, yeah. You know, I thought I'd knock the guy out in maybe mid-rounds, maybe three, four, uh, five, six rounds. But when... When I caught him with the first shot, I could see this guy was finished, you know, Salito was finished, and I put the pressure on him, and he just couldn't handle it. But, yeah, you know, he, he's a great fighter. He was unbeaten. He had, that, he had that advantage against me, but, you know, now he's been defeated, and, you know, he was defeated in a good way. When you uh, had that surprising defeat against Prescott, and the fact that you, you lost in, so early in the fight, was there part of you on Saturday that thought, well, I better be a bit more cagey here, because it didn't look like it? Yeah, you have to, you know, in boxing, one punch can change your fight, and um, I was fighting an undefeated fighter who's never tasted defeat. He, had, he was very confident walking into this fight, you know, he said he was going to go in there and beat me and everything. But, you know, I, was, I, I knew I'd done my, all my homework on him, you know, I knew I'd trained so hard for him and nothing could go wrong. I had the best team around me, I had Freddie in my corner. Uh, I just had to stay focused and, you know, stick with the game plan, and that's what I did. I'll just some, read you some quotes here from Freddie Roach, who's obviously really improved you as a fighter. He says, I've been with Amir for a year now. Uh, we've got a lot of time together. I think he's about halfway there. He's a world champion, which is a great feat in itself. But I think he has a bright future and can be a multi-champion in a lot of different weight divisions. What sort of technique and what sort of improvements has Freddie Roach given you, Amir? Freddie's a great trainer. You know, first of all, I think, um, you know, working alongside Manny Pacquiao, who he also trains... Is a great, um, is a great confidence boost, and also then, you know, the way he just does pads and Fred is a te technician. You know, whatever he teaches you, uh, you know, he's going to work for you in the fight. He sticks to a good game plan for the fight, gives you good instructions. He's a very calm coach, and up to now, you know, what we've done together, it's been brilliant. You know, I've been with him for a year or so. I've had about four fights with him, won the world title, and also defended it. Obviously, it's maybe changed your technique slightly, but also you, you seem to all be in almost quarantine before this fight. You weren't allowed a mobile phone, you didn't be able to talk to anyone. Was, did that help? Is, is that different in your build-up? Yeah, it is different because you have to remember that, you know, when you've got a big fight coming up, you have to stay 100% focused, and um, it was quite hard not having a mobile phone or communicating with my friends or family. So I was just totally focused for two weeks before the fight. Uh, no distractions there. And you know what, to be honest with you, it did help me because, you know, not having my phone, not being distracted, you know, gives you peace and I was just concentrating on focusing on one thing, which was on the fight. Have you got your phone back? I've gone back now, yeah, I've got them <laughs> in my pocket, so that's good, yeah, I've got them back and when I turned the phone on, I had about a million missed calls and a million <laughs> messages. So I'm, I'm glad Freddie wasn't using the phone. <laughs> no, I'm sure he hasn't. Just a final point about Freddie, a lot is made of him, all his fighters are successful. What has he changed in your game? Because you were a pretty good fighter before with your Olympic medal, weren't you? Yeah, you know, I was a good fighter before. And what he's done, he's just brought the best out of me. He's also, you know, just tweaked me up a little bit by being very patient, using the best shots, what I should throw, what I should not throw, um, sticking to a game plan, and also using your brains instead of using your heart sometimes, which I used to do. You know, I used to go in there, try knocking opponents out, whereas now it's all about thinking about it, using, using your feints using the right shots, working the body at the same time, and just being clever about everything and sticking to, sticking to your game plan. That's the main thing. Since I've been listening to him, you know, everything's gone right. I know you want to make your US debut next, but do you think in the future, if Ricky Hatton's still fighting, would that be a, a dream fight for you? I think the fight with Ricky Hatton would be the biggest fight British boxing has ever had. And it's a fight that all the British fans want to see, all the British people want to see. Uh, the fight is, you know, any fight in boxing is possible. You know, nowadays you can make any fight possible and it's just about, you know, leaving it with the promotion team 
I'm going to leave it with my promotion team, and I'm, I'm sure you know, if they think it's the right choice to make, you know, is to fight Ricky Hatton, we're going to make, we, we'll make the fight. But if not, then we'll go and take a different route. Brilliant. Congratulations. We're all proud of you. Well done. Thank you very much.